Hello and welcome to another episode of Tales of Middle Earth, the series in which we explore stories and locations unrelated to our journey in Citadel Guard adventures. I am Beryathan of the Citadel Guard of Gondor and today we have a special episode as well. Extra special if I may say so. Because today is the 29th anniversary of Professor Tolkien and we're gonna be paying homage to him. So first of all, we're gonna ride to the town to the town of Dwelling. We were here in uh, Evendim in Tinodir. Um but now we are swift traveling to Dwelling, which is, I believe, the the northernmost town of the Shire. A, a location that Berathan hasn't had the chance to to visit yet as part of his journey in Citadel Guard adventures, but it will be visiting the town today. Luckily, we already had the civil master uh, from one of our previous episodes in Evendi, and here we are. is a beautiful day in the morning, so we'll have plenty of time of daylight, which I enjoy so much in here. As you can see, Dwelling has been overtaken by brigands, but we're not gonna bother with that right now. Uh, you have uh, here many NPCs that will give you some quests to deal with these brigands. But the NPC we are interested in is Ronald Dwal, this, this good old fellow in here. So for those of you who don't know yet, in the case that there is a remote chance somebody doesn't know, Ronald Dwal is a hobbit that is based on Professor Tolkien himself. And he will give you quests that reference some episodes of Tolkien's life. But before we begin checking the quest that, that, that Ronald Dwell has for us. I would like to show you something here really quick. Um, yeah, let us just wait for this combat to be over. Uh, so, well, a, a couple of things first. Uh, the, town of, the town of Dwelling is a town that do exist. Uh, if you open your your book of, of Fellowship of the Ring and you pull up your map of the Shire, you will be able to find Dwelling in there. Um, and God, there is so much to be said about Dwelling. So, so let me show you right in here. I have a, a page, a website here opened from, from the Tolkien Gateway, which is my go-to site for any lore inquiries that I might have. So, as you see here, Dwelling seems to be a dialectal form of Dwelling. Let me open this up, uh, zoom this in a little bit for you. Seems to be a dialectal form of Dwelling. In a note to translators, Tolkien said, but without making clear if it was his intended meaning, that Dwelling should be a regular toponymic formation of a settlement, settlement's name, the descendants of Dwell. Dwell would be a nickname of one particular hobbit, and the name was derived from Old English Dwal, Dol. It is notable that Dol and Dwal, Gothic Dwal's fool, are cognates of Tol in Tolkien, German Tolkun, foolhardy. Tolkien himself has translated his own name into Gothic as Dwalakonais, and I hope I'm pronouncing all of this right. So, this is part of a, a note in nomenclature, um, from the Lord of the Rings, a reader's companion. I haven't had the chance to read this book yet, so if any of you know uh, who this dual is, if there is maybe a, a clearer mention of who exactly this hobbit was, that would be appreciated. But if not, let us just take the time to appreciate all the layers that it ha this has. Because on one hand, we are talking about a town that it's only referenced on the map and nowhere else is this town mentioned. As a matter of fact, the, the Tolkien professor Corey Olsen in one of his streams uh, mentioned this as well, how this is a town that is part of the map, Tolkien himself draw it on, on, on the map and, uh, and that's it. We, we don't get any more mentions of Dual, but it, it, 
it, it's just a dot on the map, but still it has a backstory to it. The Descendants of Dwol, a nickname of one particular hobbit, even if we don't know who this hobbit is. The fact that this hobbit has a name, that his descendants have settled upon the north of the Shire and then created this town of Dwelling, that to me is one of the greatest examples of why Middle Earth is unparalleled in terms of world building. No other fictional world has this amount of detail. And everywhere, thousands and thousands of years of history in Middle Earth that, that give you this sense of death uh, of an entire world that it's waiting for you to be explored, an entire world in which you can live in. That, that you can breathe, that you can feel, that you can know as much as a real world. That's that's why Tolkien is and will forever be, in my opinion, the, the grand master of fantasy. Because nobody has ever come close to what he has achieved. And on the second hand, this is also a testament of how good the Lotro team is at creating... Their, their their own version of Middle Earth because they of course have the walling and they of course are aware of all this that's going on and the way in which Tolkien himself was playing with um, with this with these words uh, the relation with his last name and um, and then they they did this with Ronald Dwal. So Ronald Dwal, his, his last name comes from this, from the town of Dwal, but not is, is not gratuitous. Is to create a relation with Tolkien. It's like saying it's Ronald, as the professor liked to be called, Dwal or Tol. And, and this is the game telling you, yeah, this is supposed to be Tolkien. And we're gonna find some other characters that do this as well, but for the moment, let us focus on, on Ronald Wall and, and this gives this shows you the amount of care the devs took in creating their own version of Middle Earth and how knowledgeable they are of both the in lore, the, the, the in world in Middle Earth and the out of world here on our world, ways in which they can create the world and, and make it fit familiar for us. So all this just to say that even even though Ronald Wall has only three quests for you, the amount of work and the amount of love that that went into creating this, it's amazing. And uh, as Tolkien fans, all of us, we can really appreciate all of this. I I actually think the professor would have enjoyed a lot this this kind of a philological game that is is presented here with Ronald's name. And he would have, of course, figured it out. So, it, it, even though Tolkien himself was not very fond of, of what little adaptations of his work he was able to see, even though Christopher Tolkien himself was not a fan either of some of these adaptations as well, I think this, I think this at least, would have worked for them. I, I hope. That, that's what I believe, in any case. So... This is what we're doing today. We're helping Ronald Wall as a way of honoring the professor and his works. So let us talk to him. It must have been the beginning of fall. I was with my son on the banks of the Brandywine, enjoying the sun, a fine meal, and a full pipe, while he sat and played with his favorite toy, a piece of lead fashioned into a small dock by the side of the river. My boy was very fond of this toy, but when it came time to leave, it wasn't anywhere to be found. I tried to console him with one of my stories. I created quite a wonderful tale about the toy's whereabouts. But if you're heading that way, perhaps you could search it. The toy has to be somewhere in the Varendalf, the sand marshes north and east of Dwelling. I have heard that strange borrowing creatures have since inhabited the area. There is a good chance one of them could have swallowed it up, thinking it to be food. So here we have the first quest, The Lost Dog, and this is referencing how Tolkien 
created the story of Rob Random. Uh, he and his family were um, spending some time on 1925 on, on a beach. I uh, don't remember exactly what which was it. Uh, Filey, I believe. And, uh, well, one of Tolkien's sons, uh, Michael, aged five, had a lit dog. A, a, and what black and white lead dog. And he was very fond of the toy. They were one day playing on the beach. A big storm came upon them, so they had to go back really quick. And Michael lost the dog. And Tolkien himself tried to find it and bring it back, but he was never able to find the lost toy. So to console Michael, he created the story of Rover. A little dog that is transformed into a toy and that goes through many different adventures in order to become a normal dog once again. And most of the details right now, I um, don't remember them too much. It's been a few years since the last time I read Rubber Random, but that's what this quest is referencing. So, it, diverging a little bit from what the actual event was, in this quest we will be able to find the last toy and bring it back to Ronald. Ah! You see, so you need to defeat one of these Barrowing Sand Nervic that, that you can find uh, here in the beach of Barandolf. One of them, most likely the very first one that you fight, will have the last dog that you then will come and, and deliver to Ronald. Is in here. So we have found it and we're gonna make his son very happy. So let us bring him the good news. Here we go. Just a moment. Were you able to find a toy, Brayathan? Ah, I see you did. Many thanks to you. Might I speak with you a moment? If my last task was not to tax him, I am in great need of some assistance from a fellow lover of the written word. I would hope that a warden of your reputation would be interested in assisting me. Not long ago, I seemed to have misplaced a very important leaf of paper while I was walking with my notes. This paper contains the beginning lines of a story I planned on writing for my children that has been conjuring in my head for some time now. Now that most of the town has been sold off, I have not been able to search for my paper. The last time I tried to have a look around, I was chased off by a group of those ruffians. I would rewrite it, rewrite it, but I cannot seem to recall the exact wording. If you could find it, I would be deeply in your debt. I think I dropped it somewhere in town. So. This one, uh, people have come, well, most of it, uh, most people at least have, have come to agree that is referencing The Hobbit, which is also a, a story that Tolkien wrote for his children and that began as a single line in a leaf of paper. Uh, Tolkien was um, revising some exams. And at some point, the the sentence came came to him in a hole in the ground or lived a hobbit. And then trying to figure out what exactly the word hobbit meant, it's that he created the entire story and, and how hobbits came to be a part of Middle Earth. But this is the one that this quest is referencing here. We can read it. In a hole in the ground there lived a boar. In the margin behind the line is scrolled in red. Nope, that's not it. <laughs> no, so that's, that's really funny. So yeah, it's definitely referenced in The Hobbit. If you take the time to read the leaf of paper, you will see. But since it's Ronald Gold writing fiction, uh, it's not a Hobbit. It's a boar. So it, one is left wondering, is, is he going to rewrite this? Is he going to change a for a hobbit 
and and make some sort of child story with it, or is he gonna create his own uh, fictional creature and uh, and and roll with it? Uh, we don't know, but it's really cool nonetheless to think about it. As you can see here, Ronald of course is also a writer. And if you remember from the first episode we did in Winterholm for the Yule Festival, you can find Ronald on the backstage of the Globe Theater. He's writing a play in there. And I think it's it's really cool how, how he was brought into, into the theater. He doesn't have any line of dialogue or any quest for you. He's just there. But that makes that space feel more believable because you have a writer backstage working on the play. And that's another way in which I think the devs were able to link the Yule Festival with the rest of Middle-earth, which is really clever and, and really awesome as well. So now that we have the leaf of paper, let us bring this back to Ronald. I simply cannot start my book without that page. Have you found it yet? Ah, I see you have. Many thanks. You're very welcome. Well now, you have been helpful, haven't you? If you could... I do have one last task for you to assist me with. Among the hobbits of the Shire, a love of languages and written works is quite uncommon. A few of my fellow colleagues and I have formed a small informal gathering of sorts for those of us who revel in such art as the writing and listening of fictional stories. We usually meet in the evenings down at the Vert, that is, the Vert and Baby Inn in Mikkel Delving. With the return of my last paper, I really should get started on my new book, but I haven't an inkling how I should reach my friends in time to tell them of my absence. If you would, go quickly and visit Jack Lewis down at the Bird and Baby before the meeting starts and let him know that I will not be making it tonight. Alright, so here we have a reference uh, to the Inkling. Uh, the Bird and Baby is a, a reference to a real, a real world a pop that existed in, in England. Um, I don't remember the the real name of it. Uh, let me let me look it up. Let me look it up really quick for you. I believe it's a, a reference to the eagle and child. I, I believe that's that's the name, the eagle and child which was named by some people the bird. Uh, and that's where the Inklings Torkins group reunited to talk. Uh, so here we have a little reference to it. I haven't an inkling how I should reach my friends in time to tell them of my absence. Uh, so that's a really nice touch as well. Really well thought as well. So we need to go to the bird and baby and bring Ronald's news to his friends. Now, we could do this really quick by swift traveling to Bree, and from Bree going to Mikkel Delving, a swift travel to Mikkel Delving, and, uh, and that will leave you almost at uh, the door of the bird and baby. But, but I, I, I want to take the time as well to take a, a ride through the Shire and to bathe on the side. The Shire uh, at daylight is is beautiful and uh, we haven't had much time to explore the Shire just yet as part of our regular series so let us take the time to spend some time enjoying the Shire and uh, if I remember any other details that I and tell you about along the way, I will certainly do so. So, first of all, we're gonna come to the town of Odbarton, uh, right across here. You can find one of the lost relics for the inner absence quest line. Well, not, not a lost relic, but one of those creepy relics. I don't remember the exact name. Where is it? Lost relic, maybe. Uh, instances. Mysterious relics, sorry. Here you will find one of the mysterious relics for the Inder Absence quest line because right next to Oliverton we have the North Cotton Farms, which is the location of the instance 
but also of many different quests that are worth doing at least once because it's like the, the habit life to farm and everything but it can be it, it does take a long while because there are a lot of quests in the North Colton farms anyway we're gonna take the opportunity and talk to the civil master to unlock the this, this swift travel here to Old Barton from Evendim and from the Shire. You can swift travel to the Broken Borings as well. Uh, I have already taken the time to to clear up some some deeds and and some civil masters on the Shire, which I am gonna show to you as well, but not yet, uh, because that links directly with an, an upcoming episode, and I leave it to that. So. Uh, Maybe I've been able to pick your interest, so you can keep an eye open for the the time when Baratheon will come to the Shire and fully explore explore it and find all its landmarks. For the time being, we'll stick to the road and continue our way south towards Mickledon Southwest. Uh, so I think what we're gonna do. So here we will come to the Broken Borings, and from the Broken Borings let us go to the Green Hill Country, over hill, the hill, let us make a quick stop at, at Bag End, and um, yeah, I think Verathon has not done Bag End yet. Alright, I have it lamp. I didn't rem remember this one, but yeah, let us take the opportunity now that we're here. This lamp marks a place where the first Hobbit pioneers... Oh, I missed that, okay. But we have the, the long road of the Hobbits, you have found the Hobbit lamp post near the statue of the Bull Roarer in, in the Shire. And this will come into play for when we get to Enedway. Uh, but there is still time before we get there. We just need to find four lamps. And the other three are in Enedway, so we don't need to worry about that. Here we have the statue of Bull Roarer Took, defeating Gold Fimbul, the goblin, and inventing the game of golf in the process. Let us go back. The horse, let us ride. Oh yeah, Verathon of course has also had a chance of coming in here before eh, as as part of another episode of Tales of Middle Earth. You might remember the, the Harvest Festival when we were doing the frightful tales to curl the hair on your toes. Verathon did visit the Green Hill Country, maybe not the town of Overhill, I'm not so sure about that, but close enough. As you can see here, there are plenty of quests, because one thing that I have not done at all are quests in the Shire. Which I... I do plan on doing at some point. There are so many things to do in the Shire, really. That... Yeah, one does wonder when... <laughs> when can you... Uh, save some time for doing that, but you have the quick post, you have the spoiled pies questline, you have the Shire Brewmaster, which is also really cool, on top of all the other quests in the Shire, some of which are more interesting that, than others, I would say, but, but there is a lot of things to do in the Shire. So here we have Baggin, Lovilia Sackville Baggins, and Loto Sackville Baggins, uh, so if you don't mind, I just want to take some time to to check back in now that we're in here. So um, it's been a while uh, as well since last time I read a Hobbit, uh, and the description of the Hobbit hole that Tolkien does in there. Uh, but here we have many different uh, rooms. 
Eriador, a map of Eriador. A painting of what seems to be Merkwood. The dragon. Here obviously you cannot go any further because otherwise this would be a really huge place. But here we have what we can explore about Bag End. So once again in one of his streams the, the Tolkien professor took the time of coming to Bag End and exploring what we can explore in it as well. Talking about uh, the room with the chimney where most likely the dwarves and, and Bilbo first talked about. Uh, the journey to Erebor and, and Smaug. The other room in which Bilbo had his parchments, his books and everything. It's really it's really interesting watching the, the Tolkien professor travel throughout Middle-earth, explaining you all the little easter eggs that he comes across as he visits every single area and answering some really interesting questions. So if you haven't had the chance, on, on the off chance rather, that you have not taken the time of, of listening to the Tolkien professor in-game, I highly recommend you to do so. You can visit the Signum University YouTube channel and there you will find two different playlists. One is a Riflet's Adventures to Middle Earth. Uh, that's not the name, but that's basically what it is. And in that one, the Tolkien professor levels up Grifflet, a habit burglar, from yeah, from level one to to level cap. He has not reached level cap yet, as of the time of recording, he is really far away. Really, um, he's still in in Rohan, I believe, but he is making good progress. I have just recently started watching it, and every single episode, he will say something I had no idea about about dwarves, about wizards, about the Shire, about uh, the many literary influences and traditions that Tolkien used when writing Lord of the Rings. Some of them which I didn't know about, so it's really an interesting an interesting watch. Uh, in, in episode 2, in, I believe it was episode 2, and that's when when uh, the Tolkien professor uh, visits on one hand the Verdon baby and explains it with a lot of detail and, and some some extra details too, and in which he also visits back end and shows you what he can about it. So now that we're coming to the Verdon baby, let me summarize really quick some of the of the tidbits that he gave on that episode, but once again, I highly recommend you to, to visit Signum's University channel and, and listen to the Tolkien professor. He has a lot of charisma when it comes to explaining Tolkien and you can tell that he loves it and enjoys it very much. He is very passionate about it and you can learn a lot of it from him as well. So here we are at the bird and baby. That's what we're looking for. So we're gonna enter the inn. Uh, so here we have the innkeeper, some of the hobbits, and I think, yeah, this is the place. So here we have Jack Lewis down, which is a play on C.S. Lewis's name. Uh, he liked to be called Jack, hence the name, and Lewis, of course, is a play on his last name as well. Owen Farfield, which is a play on Owen Barfield, in Harlow Williams, which is a Charles Willem's son, I, I I believe. That I that, that other name I let me double check. Charles Williams is Carl Williams, sorry. And they meet at the Eagle and Child, which is in Lothro, the bird and baby. Now, there is a really cool story of, about why is there a rabbit in here, but I'm gonna let the Tolkien professor um, explain that himself. So, once again, I will encourage you to visit his channel, and I will do my best to remember and leave a, a link to that episode on the description so that to make things easier for you. For the time being, let us tell good old Jack that you know, Ronald wouldn't be able to come here for Just today's meeting. Why, hello there. 
You have a message from Ronald. That is a shame. I was hoping Ronald had finished his discourse on my book. Did you hear that Owen? Ronald isn't making the meeting today. Hmm, that is too bad. I was going through it from the Silver Horn tonight. All you have are thanks for coming all this way to tell us about his absence. I hope this book is as good as he claims. Well, let me tell you about it, boy. It is not like Ronald to miss our meetings. I trust that he is working hard on his story and is not caught up in any silly games. We're missing some, some bits of dialogue in here. That is a shame. I was hoping Ronald had finished his discourse on my book, The Place of the Boar. I was going through it from the Silver Horn tonight. Pity he won't hear it. So I do wonder if, most likely, then the character that went to this quest line, I would assume the place of the boar is a play on one of Charles Williams's writings, the same as the Silver Horn and an Owen Barfield. But on that one, I'm not sure. So if you happen to know about those two, please be sure to let me know. So that was it. Basically, we let the hobbits in here know that Ronald wouldn't be able to come here for, for the meeting. Now, all we need to do is make our way back to Walling and let Ronald know that we did as he asked. Once again, let us take the time to take a stroll through the Shire, but... Now that we are here, Hello, might as well friend. talk to... You help me with something? Wenda, Cranesville... Greetings, friend. Get some of the VIP <laughs> items. Which are always good. Uh, so let us use the, the jack first. That will give us a boost with crafting and... Well, I'm farming some some crafting every now and then, so this this is a a buff that is always good to have. So the ride to dwelling is actually doesn't take that long, actually. I would say. Uh, And I mean, it's not like we are in any hurries because that is the this is the very last part of this quest line. As you see, it's, it's really short, only three quests: eh, Robber Random, the Hobbit, and the Inklings. But it's it's really fun, and and the more you know about it, the more you enjoy it. Because to be totally honest with you, first time I I found Ronald Wall, I. I didn't realize at first the relation with him and Professor Tolkien. Uh, maybe with the quest of the Lost Dog. But it's like, hey, they're making a play on Rubber Random, that's cool. And then, hey, on the Hobbit, that's cool, but that's curious as well. So then I I, I went to investigate and, and find out what they were doing with Ronald Wall and the Inklings. And even though... I not always do this quest, I have not done this on, on all my characters, every time I do. And I enjoy it very much. And I just recently found out about Ronald's presence on Winterholm. To be honest with you, I, I realized that when I was recording the episode for the Dual Festival. I don't know, maybe... Maybe we will find Ronald again. The next time we come back to the Shire, uh, the scouring of the Shire, which is something that all players have been have been waiting basically since the game was released, and and there the brigands, the ruffians in Dwelling are some foreshadowing of the scouring of the Shire, I would say, because that that lets you see. They are already coming to the Shire, establishing a foothold in here and abusing poor hobbits, basically. So, you know, that would be really awesome 
if we had another set of quests from Ronald after we come back to the Shire. Either during the scouring of the Shire or after the scouring of the Shire. When, when they are recuperating and, and recovering everything they lost. I'm pretty sure by, uh, at, by this point in time the depths have already the scouring of the Shire so planned out. Because they've been planning this actually from, from day one. So it will be it would be really fun as well to see when the Skarn of the Shire finally comes to the game. How many clues and how many little details they had planted before. And uh, and how it all plays out. I enjoy that very much. What do we have in here? There's on the green fields, joining the boundaries. Okay, now. There is um, another celebration. It's not, it's not a festival per se, but it's also a seasonal thing. Uh, around St. Patrick's Day. Here in the green fields. And in which you do some of Cool Rodder's brew. Don't remember the specifics, but it's really fun, especially because after you drink it, everything turns green. I do have an, an extra pint of that, and I plan on, on toasting to the professor and um, after we finish this quest. So, that's, that's something else. The, the Tolkien Society uh, for this year's celebration, well, I think, as far as I remember, is, is the same for every year. But basically, the way in which they encourage readers and, and fans all around the world to celebrate the professor is at 9 p.m. your local time, you raise a glass, it say to the professor, and drink it. And that's what we're gonna do today. Um, I'm gonna do my best to, to sync this uh, with with 9 p.m. so that when we are doing the toast it is actually 9 p.m. on, on the release date. But I'm not sure if I will be able to do that. Um, I'll do my best though. Since, since YouTube is programmed to to give you the upload options of o'clock and past 15, past 30, and past 45, we'll need to keep that in mind um, if we are aiming to, to synchronize the toast. So let us go back to the professor and, and let us see how is time treating us today. Maybe we'll be able to do so, maybe not. Uh, bottom line, I will just release it, schedule the release so that we post as close to 9 p.m. o'clock as possible. I will need to wait and see for the time being. Here we are back in dueling. And here is Ronald. What do you need? You were able to make it before the meeting started. Wonderful! I already have the first chapter started. Old Lewis Down thought I would be playing games instead of working. I dare say he knows I would never think of getting involved in something in something so silly. Alright, so Ronald will give us his pipe. An old briar pipe given to you as a gift for your assistance to Ronald Wall. It still has a bit of old Toby left in it. And some pies, some brandy wine, and some potions. We're gonna finish this. Uh, let us move the pipe for a quick slot, quick slots for just a moment, and let me also really quick grab this old Rogers brew that I that I had saved on mine. Uh, so yeah, let's take a couple pictures with Ronald on memory of the professor. So first of all, you have your pipe out, 
let me take my pipe out too and let us both of us smoke a little bit together that's it a little loud in the form of a bird uh, that pipe has one hour cooldown so we cannot use it again but what we can do is use the emote smoke and smoke with good old Ronald yeah, I like this angle better Smoking here with Ronald has also reminded me of one of Blind Guardian's songs. One of his most their most famous songs, the Bard song in the forest. Because it's a song about how basically people remember the tale but not the Bard who tells the story. And uh Well that's not the case for the professor because we do remember him as much as the stories he crafted for us. And uh yeah, this, this is the perfect day to celebrate his memory, to honor his memory, and to be thankful for, for everything he has given us on, on all these years. Bard songs will remain, they all will remain in my thoughts and in my dreams, they're always in my mind. The songs of hobbits, dwarves and men and elves. Come close your eyes, you can see them too. We live with them too. So, once again, thank you to the professor and I think it's time to toast him and uh, honor him as much as, as we can. I, it's, it's curious, just, just today I picked up once again, Lord of the Rings, I was rewritten re it last year, but I stopped at book 5. I picked book 5 again today, Pippin and Gandalf in Minas Tirith meeting Baragond and preparing for the great battle that is to come. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I would like to believe there is no coincidence in it. No better way to honor the professor than to rate his works and to also raise a glass on his memory on the virtual world as well. So we're gonna first raise a glass, a flask of brandy wine. And we're gonna that one on you. Oh god, but you drink it too fast, man. <laughs> uh anyway. It's it's That's the first one, but we're also gonna drink some of, uh, not brandy wine, of Paul Horror's brew. It is one to the professor. And as you see here, this is where everything <laughs> turns green. <laughs> this is amazing. Uh, this, this debuff will well, not debuff, but this this effect will last for five minutes. So I think this is the right moment to end today's episode. Thank you for watching this episode of Tales of Middle Earth. Join me next time when we will explore many more locations and stories that are still left untold. For the time being, my friends, stay safe, take care, good luck to you all. Don't forget to raise a glass to Professor Tolkien everywhere you are. Let's honor his memory, let's be thankful once again, and I will see you on the next one. Bye bye to you all, and I will see you later.